to the friends and families of Hannah and Alan. It's good to have you with us to celebrate this baptism. And there will be tea after the service this morning during the hall to which you are all invited to join Alan and Hannah after the service. There will be a second sandwich lunch next Sunday and there are sheets at the door, both doors for names so we can cater for you. The charges will be four pounds per adult and two pounds for children. And next Sunday there will be a retirement offering for Poppy Scotland. Our Christmas fair is on the 30th of November this year and there are boxes at both doors for donations for stalls and the hampers. There will be a quick session meeting on Tuesday the 5th of November at 7pm. And this is John's last day with us for a little while. Don't get too comfortable with it. <laughs> uh, so a big thanks John for, for filling in. This <laughs> to celebrate the baptism of Tobias, who is lovely and sleeping still, which, fingers crossed, for the whole service. I keep my hands up so I don't wake anyone up when it happens. But it's lovely to see you all here this morning. Uh, our call to worship this morning has some responses. The words will appear on the screen and it is the words in bold that I would like you to respond. So before our call to worship, as usual, let's still our hearts and our minds. <coughs> Once upon a time, a wise man offered a challenge. What is the greatest commandment? The calendars, calendars on our desk share a vision of greatness. Bills to pay, phone calls to return, Appointments to keep. Love the Lord is a good Lord. The cameras of our memory share what commands us. Children to bathe and partners to help. Parents calling and grandchildren hopeful. Love the Lord is a good Lord. With all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Still the Spirit lures us to new priorities. Open spaces to experience wonder. Strangers becoming friends, devotion to that which transcends. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love your neighbour as yourself. Let's carry on the theme of love. Let's sing our opening hymn, which is in CH4 519. Love divine, all love success. <laughs>
Let us pray. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, God of all seasons, God of all time, God of the past, present, and the future, God of all words, we come to you this day as we are, out of time, out of sorts, out of reason, yet we come seeking time to be in your We come and ask to be stilled and calmed in your presence this day, ready to listen to you, ready to know you more, be willing to know you, follow you, and obey you, and listen to your word, follow your guidance, and accept your will for us. Let us be filled with the desire to listen and act as you would want, filled with love and compassion and hope. Forgive us when our lives become muddled, busy and distant from the love and compassion you show to us and we should show and share with others. Forgive us when your word becomes just words, when we lack the discipline and determination to listen to your word and accept your will for us. Father God, as we feel your presence this day, this day that you have made for us, let us be guided by your spirit of joy and hope and show us gently and humbly how to follow you, how to be obedient to you. Teach us to accept your love, your compassion, your forgiveness and your grace as we pray the prayer your Son and our Saviour taught us to say. in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children and their children, after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give to you, so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in the land flowing milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them in the door frames of your houses and on your gates. The next reading is Hebrews 9, verses 11 to 14. When Jesus came as high priest of the good things that we are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man made. The more perfect tabernacle is not, that is not man made. That is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of blood or goats or calves, but he entered in his holy place once for all by his own blood having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of the heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctifying so that they are outwardly clean. How much more will the blood of Christ, 
who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. <laughs> our third and final reading is Mark 12, 34. The greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of all the commandments, which one is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this, hear O Israel, the Lord of God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord of your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not, not far from the kingdom. And for men, no one dared ask him any more of these questions. May the Lord bless these readings. We will now sing him 500 in the church hymnody as the dear for the Lord.
rules in so many different parts of our lives that are rules for driving our cars. I wish more people would stick to them and indicate and things like that, but that's a whole different matter. There are rules for our jobs. We all have rules. Now, I bet there are rules in your classroom at school, isn't there? Yeah. Can you tell me a few of the lots and lots of rules that you have? Ashley? No running around the classroom. No running around the classroom. That's, that's a good rule. Yeah. Ariana? Okay. Floor. Okay. Be kind. Be kind. Be responsible. Be responsible. And be safe. I said that. Huh. <laughs> safe. Kind, yeah. responsible, and safe. Those are really good rules. Can you stick to them all? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. So, <laughs> why do you think the teachers made those rules? Is there a reason the rules are important? Ariana, tell me. So you won't get hurt. So you won't get hurt. That's right, yeah. What else, Ashley? Is there another reason? Yep, so you can keep yourself and others safe. Yep. It wouldn't be good if you were running about with a sharp knife or something, wouldn't it? No. No. Nope, definitely not. Ariana? Another rule. You're not letting bullying no bullying as well. That's a good rule. Yes. Ashley, have you got one? No hands, feet. No hands or feet on other people. <laughs> no hands or feet on other people. <laughs> I especially like that rule. <laughs> What, what rule have you got? No pushing. No pushing. That's a good rule as well. You always get pushed at school, don't you? Because he's standing in line. You always get pushed at school. Uh, Ariana, have we, have we got more? Yes. We're not allowed to speak over the teacher. No, oh, yeah. No, no speaking when the teacher's speaking. Or else. Or else. <laughs> I'm not going to ask what the or else is. <laughs> And something that both of you and everybody does in here, what do you do before you ask a question or answer a question? Sam, you raise your hand, just like Sam did there in demonstration. Well done. So we've got rules that are designed to protect our safety. Yeah. We have rules to protect our things. Yeah. Sometimes we even have rules to protect our feelings. Don't we? Yeah. Now, I'm asking you today about rules because our, our gospel reading is about rules, strangely enough. Yes. In the Bible we read about many different rules, but the ones that are most important have a special name. Do we know what those, na what those rules are called, Ashley? The Ten Commandments. I don't have to now ask you how many there are. <laughs> you preempted my next question. Well done. Yes. In the Old Testament, Moses receives the whole list of the Ten Commandments, correct? So in our reading today, someone asked Jesus which of the commandments is most important. And I suppose you could say Jesus teaches them a wee trick to try and remind everyone of what are the most important? See, he tells them that there are two rules, that if you follow these two rules really carefully, it will help you follow all of the rest of them. The first, can you remember what the first rule is, Callum? Love your neighbour as yourself. No, nope. first one was almost, that was the second. What's the first? Oh, God. Love God. Yes, the first is to love God, the second is to love your neighbour just in the same way that you love yourself. And that's a really good way to remember all of the commandments, okay? Because if we treat other people the way that we would like to be treated, would you steal from them then? No. no. Would you kill someone? No. no. Would you lie to anyone then? No. No. <laughs> 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 
world are going to spoil everything. <laughs> the two of them look so angelic sitting there as well, don't they? <laughs> so, this rule is so important that we have a special name for it. Do you know what the special name is? It's a colour. What's the, what's the best colour? Purple. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not called a purple rule. <laughs> what are you? The, sorry? Gold. The golden oh, rule. Purple. Yes. The golden rule. Love and treat others the same way that you would like them to treat you. I suppose is an easy one to remember, isn't it? So if you want someone to treat you in a certain way, you have to remember that's the way you have to treat them. And that means you will keep all of the other commands of God. So, with that be short message, we're going to pray. <laughs> For those who visit, it's a follow after me prayer. So basically repeat after me. Okay, so let's pray. Dear God, as we look to the week ahead, Help us to demonstrate our love for you and others. Help us to demonstrate our love for you and others. Just as Jesus has reminded us. Just as Jesus has reminded us. Thank you and amen. Thank you and amen. And we're going to sing, we're going to sing hymn number 528. Make me a channel of your peace. <laughs>
sure most of you will have seen or at least heard of the movie A Bridge Too Far. Yeah. It's a true story from World War II which took place in September 1944 and it involved British and US troops. So the plan was to cross the bridge at Arnhem over the Rhine River and then to proceed through the Netherlands on into Germany. The plan was called Operation Market Garden, but it failed because the bridge was too far away. It was too far because the armies weren't aggressive enough. They were overly cautious and consequently they couldn't reach the bridge that would have enabled them to cross over the Rhine River. Now had the Allied armies been successful, World War II could have ended by Christmas 1944. In other words, they were close, but just not close enough. The scribe in our story approaches Jesus and asks him what commandment is the most important. He knew the answer, and Jesus affirmed the answer. He said, you are right, and you are not far from the kingdom of God. Meaning, he was close, but he just hadn't quite arrived. I believe that the scribe is not unlike the Allied forces who could reach the bridge at Arnhem. He knew how to reach the kingdom of God, but he needed to be more aggressive. He needed to love the Lord with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. So what did Jesus mean when he said we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul, with all our mind? with all of our strength. And what did Jesus mean when he said, you're not far from the kingdom of God? These two questions could have a vast variety of interpretations. One thing we can be sure of in this passage, Jesus equates loving God and neighbour with the life in the kingdom. Perhaps the best way to get a handle on what Jesus meant is to look at each of the four conditions separately. So, first, Jesus said to love with the heart. I believe that what Jesus was talking about was being passionate. Today people, well, they just don't seem to be passionate about faith. Frankly, I'm not even sure people are passionate about anything. Well, almost anything. And here I'll say I can only speak about something that I know, okay? So, I'm sure most people here that will come as no surprise to anyone to tell you that I am rather passionate about football. Okay? <laughs> or to be exact, one football team in Glasgow in particular. <laughs> now the team I'm talking about is the one that's gone through quite a somewhat difficult past 10 years or so. Okay. Now I won't go over all of the things that happens, but what I would like to comment on is the absolute commitment and passion for the club shown by supporters. They broke all sorts of attendance records as the club made its way back up through lower leagues. They followed the team all over the country and beyond week in, week out. Why? Because they loved their club passionately. They threw themselves wholly into helping the club. Imagine that sort of passion for our faith. To be passionate about our faith is to passionately love God and others. It means we truly and sincerely strive to relate. It means we literally throw ourselves into the lives of others. Second, Jesus wants us to love God and others with our soul. The soul is that part of us that defies logic. It's a bit of a mystery. Loving with your soul goes beyond what people would consider normal. We give forth our love because we want to, and it probably makes no sense to outsiders. 
Now, in his book, Watchers in the Night, American author Garrett Kaiser told this wee story to illustrate what I'm poorly trying to say. He said, during the course of earning her master's degree, a woman found it necessary to commute several times a week from a wee, a wee town called Victory in Vermont to the State University in Burlington, a good 100 miles away. Coming home late at night, she would see an old man sitting by the side of her road. He was always there, in sub-zero temperatures and stormy weather, no matter how late she returned. But he made no acknowledgement of her passing. The snow settled on his cap and on his shoulders as if he was merely another gnarled old tree. She often wondered what brought him to that same spot every evening. Perhaps it was stubborn habit, private grief, perhaps even a mental disorder. Finally, she asked a neighbour of hers, have you ever seen an old man who sits by the road late at night? Oh yes, said her neighbour, many times. Is he a little touched upstairs? Does he ever go home? The neighbour laughed and said, he's no more touched than you or me. And he goes home right after you do. You see, he doesn't like the idea of you driving with yourself out late, all alone on those back roads. So every night he walks out to wait for you. When he sees your tail lights disappear around the bend and he knows you're okay, he goes home to bed. Third, Jesus said we should love with our minds. To be persons of faith is to be those who study, reflect, and solve problems. When it comes to how we can love God and others, Jesus wants us to use our minds, doing our homework, making plans, and being intentional, intentional about where we can do the most good. And finally, Jesus said to love God with all our strength. And several years ago, while still in training, I was speaking to a gent who was working on the roof of the church that I had been placed in. He was near the very top of a very high ladder, hence why I was standing at the bottom. But he was at the very top of this ladder that was propped up against the side of the church whilst he did the necessary repairs to the steeple. And as we chatted, I said to him that from where he was, he was a lot closer to heaven than I was. He started to laugh, then he said, I doubt very much if I'm anywhere near heaven. So I told him that the church folk really appreciated all the work that he had been doing for them, and that he had made a big difference. He said, just don't tell my boss about all of the little extras that I've been doing. Now, I'd been aware that he had gone out of his way to repair a few things that weren't in the contract. The worker was closer to heaven than he realised. He was willing to go out of his way to do some work for us that he wasn't contracted to do. I believe that when Jesus said to use all of our strength to love God and neighbour, he was speaking about effort. This man was putting forth some effort to add to the beauty and the maintenance of our church building. And he truly was closer to heaven than he realised because of his commitment to helping his neighbour. You see, loving God and loving our neighbours is not just a matter of believing. It requires energy, effort and passion. Too often believers live as though they've already arrived. But to be persons of faith is to be on a journey every day, doing all that we can, giving our best for the sake of the kingdom of God. But fortunately, the Allied forces didn't give up, even though they couldn't reach the bridge at Arnhem. They pressed on, and eventually Hitler was defeated. God wants us to press on too.
loving the Lord and loving our neighbours with passion, taking risks, using all of our resources and going that extra mile. When we truly love God and our neighbours with all our hearts, minds, souls and strength, we will experience life in the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing once again. You'll find it in Mission Praise number one. A new commandment I give unto you. And we're going to sing it through twice. start of the Christian community many centuries ago, people have been received into the worldwide church family through baptism. Baptism is the sign that God loves each one of us individually before we can understand or even respond. It shows and tells us that God's grace works in and through our lives and that God wants to be known, loved and enjoyed by all people. The water we use in baptism is thus a seal of God's grace and reminds us of Jesus Christ, who was himself baptised, buried and raised, that we might know life in all of its fullness. The water is sprinkled or poured out, as it were, on us all, like God's Spirit, so we are assured and reminded that we are all God's children and our future lies with God. In the church fa the, and the church, the family of God, is where we will be built and equipped to serve God in the world. In our tradition, we can only be baptised once, either as an adult or as a child. Adults, of course, can take their own promises, but children cannot. And so it falls to the parents or guardians to take them on their behalf. 
Baptism is not dependent on the answers to those promises. However, it is a that no one comes to baptism without faith in God. Baptism is a free gift of grace and offered freely to the one baptized. By bringing a child for baptism, the parents have already discussed their faith and understanding of baptism. And so the promises are made after the baptism rather than before. Let's join together in prayer. Loving God, you have called us to share in your grace and love in the fellowship of faith. So we receive this child to be baptized in your name. By the power of your Holy Spirit present with us now, may you receive the, the fullness of your grace and remain faithful to you all of his days through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you're not too busy running about enjoying yourselves in this baptism of the party, come forward please. These are smashing big bits that you can run about in. <laughs> I do it all the time, I'm honest. Welcome to Hannah and Alan and of course Paris and to Morgan and Chris. No, no, you're not getting away with it. Up you come. <laughs> you stand up here next to them. Yeah, thank you. What are you saying? What is this child's full name? Tobias Angus Mitchell. Would you like to come forward, Alan? Oh, I hope it's not too cold. <laughs> Tobias Angus Mitchell, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of God fill your heart, the hope of God shape your thinking, and the love of God direct your life. Amen. Okay, I now have some questions for Tobias's parents. Godparents and the adults and the children. So the response is I do. Okay. <laughs> Firstly, Hannah and Alan, in bringing Tobias for baptism, do you confess your faith in God, the loving Creator, in Jesus, in and through whom we are promised life, and in the Holy Spirit, our helper and guide? Do you promise with God's help to provide a loving home for Tobias and to bring him up? in the faith of the gospel, and as far as you can, in the fellowship of the church. Could the adults please stand as you are able? Do you, Morgan and Chris, as Tobias's godparents, and all of the other adults here present as part of his wider church family, personal family and friends, Promise to do all that you can to love, encourage and support him and his parents in keeping the promises that they have made so that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of God. Amen. Children, would you like to stand please? All the children please stand. Lily, you can run about. <laughs> do all the boys and girls present promise to love Tobias like a brother? To play with him and share his toys with him, and when possible, to welcome him into your circle of friends. Well done. Please be seated. Not According to Christ's commandment, Tobias Angus Mitchell is now received into the family and household of God. May God help us all to keep our promises. And as a reminder of this day, and Lily, is she coming? One down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. As a reminder of this day, we present you with four gifts that are symbolic of the baptism. Firstly, fresh flowers, which Ariana will give over, reminding us of the new life we receive through Christ. Secondly, Ali, can you take this one? Okay. A certificate 
to remind you of this day. And actually, a Bible, so Tobias can learn both here and at home of the love of God in his life. Well done. Thank you, ladies. Well done. You. The fourth gift, Tobias, is the gift of knowing that you are held in prayer by your new church family. We now join together in singing the ancient blessing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, which you can find in the hymn books 796. And while we do, if it's okay, we'll take, someone will take Tobias around the church so that you can see him in all his glory as we sing the ironic blessing. Morgan. <laughs> together in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that Tobias has now received into the life of the church. Keep him always in your love. Grant that he may grow in grace and be strengthened in faith. We ask your special blessing on his family, on his parents Hannah and Alan, on his godparents Morgan and Chris, and all those people in his wider family circle that they may be surrounded with love that is secure and gentle. Give Tobias his family grace and wisdom, to teach him your truth and lead him in your love and self-giving. Touch us all with the promise of this sacrament, with a spirit of joy and hope that enables us to face the future with courage and with cheerfulness, trusting always in your loving purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. We will join together once again in prayer as we dedicate our offering now and we pray for ourselves, our church and our world. Let's pray. Great and glorious Saviour, we we'll listen attentively to your voice. We place our trust in your truth and grace. We generously give in gratitude for your truth in our spiritual journey. We pray that our gifts may help others to see your kingdom, to draw closer to you, and to find ultimate peace. We pray in the name of the one who sustains us throughout life's journey, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, we, your people, acclaim you. We praise you, we exalt you, we bless your holy name. It is your love that is revealed in the life and death of Jesus. It is your power that is seen in his resurrection. And it's your majesty that is made known by his ascension into heaven to be at your side. Help us, O oh God, to always keep your power and your authority and your love and your majesty in our minds 
and to never neglect the doing of your will. Help us to be obedient to the words you place in our hearts and our minds. O oh God, in this time with us, Christ has shown his authority over wind and wave. We pray that he may bring peace and calm to those whose lives are troubled. And in this brief moment of silence, we especially pray today for those closest to us. Thank you, God, most holy, for hearing our prayers. All these things we ask of you and say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, he who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and forevermore. Amen. Sing together our closing hymn, hymn number 250, said by the Lord am I, and once again we'll sing it through twice. <laughs> Be with you all now and forevermore. <laughs>